Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand power dissipation in case of CMOS circuits. There are two different components which constitute towards power in case of CMOS circuits. One is a static power dissipation and the other one is dynamic power dissipation. We will see both of this in details. In this clip, we are going to focus our attention towards static power dissipation, what factors cause it and how we can try to reduce it. So let's start with the basics. We know that the instantaneous power, because at each and every instant of time we want to find out the power, is given by P of T, which is the power drawn from the power supply, is proportional to IDD of T into VDD. Basically this is nothing but supply current and this is nothing but your supply voltage and this will give me instantaneous power. From this we can easily find out energy consumed over some time interval t. Let's say energy consumed over time t will be equal to, we know that energy equal to 0 to t because we are concerned with time interval t integration of power which is nothing but idt of t into vdd by dt into dt. From this we can easily find out average power average power over this interval time t is equal to 1 by t because this is nothing but energy by time correct so it's nothing but 1 by t 0 to t idd supply current into supply voltage into dt remember this because this will help us when we go ahead and find out different type of sources of power here i have not done anything extraordinary i have just written the instantaneous power from that i found out energy consumed over time interval t and from there on i found out my average power in the time interval t now we know that there are two different types of power dissipation in case of mosfets let's understand this one is a static power dissipation and the other one is dynamic power dissipation let's understand which all factors constitute to static power dissipation and which all will constitute to dynamic power dissipation Static power dissipation is due to subthreshold current, which we have already seen in the previous clip and we'll focus our attention to it very soon. Tunneling current, gate tunneling, again we saw that as well in the previous clips. Leakage current due to reverse bias junction or junction leakage. Why only this many? Is because we have already seen when we studied CMOS inverter that when an input one is applied, we found out the power dissipation, right? the average static power dissipation only one of the transistor is on at one point of time which does not have a direct path for idd for current between vdd and ground and hence this was approximately equal to zero and the only power or the only current which flowed in this case was nothing but i leakage now this three terms will lead to power dissipation or the static power dissipation and dynamic power dissipation we have switching power which is nothing but charging and discharging of load capacitor and we also have short circuit current which is because of a condition when both your pull up and pull down are on or your NMOS and PMOS both are partially on. So what we need to understand here is my total power is going to be P static plus P dynamic correct dynamic we'll see in the next clip we are going to focus our attention on p static we have already found steady state or q q sin power for p static under q sin condition we have already seen that because the input does not change there is no change at the output and this q sin power dissipation or the steady state power dissipation for a cmos inverter or for that matter any cmos circuit is approximately equal to zero so the only factors which constitute whose static power dissipation is nothing but subthreshold current, tunneling current and leakage through reverse bias diodes which we are going to focus our attention on. Let's quickly go and do that. 